Okay, so in today's math lesson, what we started doing is using conversions with our ratios and rates and things like that. So, uh, uh, but essentially things work out to be the same. Uh, I'm going to run a uh, one problem uh, solving it a couple of different ways. So, here we have, uh, we need to find out how many feet are in 48 inches. So, it says make a ratio table that compares feet and inches. Use a conversion rate of 12 inches per foot or 1 12th foot per inch. So, we're going to do both. So here we go. Let's begin. So the, the quickest and the most uh, simplistic way, for me anyway, is to simply begin making a chart here. I'm going to compare feet and inches. All right, I'm going to start plugging things in. So if I have my main conversion here, I know that I have uh, 12 inches for one foot. And if I'm looking for 48 inches, I'm going to put that guy right in there. And I know right away that this is a times 4 situation here. Times 4, because 12 times 4 gives me 48. Therefore, if I multiply this by 4, I get 4 over there. Okay? Another way to take a look at this is to make a, uh, a longer chart and to simply grow the chart uh, the same way. So let's see if I have feet and inches again. And I know that 1 foot equals 12 inches, I can just start using a pattern and growing. So 12, 24, 36, and 48. Noticing everything is going, or increasing by 12. Why? Because I'm increasing one foot. Okay, and as I increase each foot, I know that 12 inches represents that one foot. Now, I left a blank up top for a reason because if I wanted to find out the conversion, how many feet are actually in an inch, well, if I have one foot per inch, that means I have one twelfth of a foot equaling one inch. So one inch is actually one twelfth of a foot. Why? Because there are 12 inches in a foot. So if I broke that foot into 12 parts, each would be worth an inch. Therefore, one twelfth of that foot equals an inch. Now, why is that important? Well, that's important because, let me change colors here. If I'm looking for how many feet uh, are in 48 inches, I have this 1 right here. So if I'm going to take the 1, multiply it by 48, that gives me that 48. Therefore, I need to do the same thing on the other side, 1 12th times 48. Now, what does that look like? Well, that looks like a lot of fun because I'm going to do here need a little more space now. This is stuff that I grew up doing, which was great. So I'm going to put a little C area over here. I need to take 1 12th of a foot per inch and multiply that by 48 inches, and that should give me a certain number of feet. It should be 4. So here we go. This is what it looks like. I'm going to fractionalize everything. 1 12th of a foot per inch, because that's that ratio. There it is. 1 12th of a foot per inch. I'm going to multiply that by 48. So there's my 1 12th foot per inch. I'm going to multiply that by 48. Here it comes times 48. I'm going to stick that over 1 because I want to fractionalize everything. It still equals 48. And it's 48. Uh, that 48 represents inches. I want 48 inches. So that's times inches. And I'm going to fractionalize that and put that over 1 because anything over 1 equals itself, whether it's inches or whether it's 48 or whatever. And here's my setup. So there it is. Here's my, here's my ratio, my conversion ratio because I have 1 12th of a foot for every inch. And I want 48 of those things. Here they are. I want 48 inches worth of that. So now I can start multiplying and simplifying and all kinds of fun stuff. I notice that I have an inches over inches. Okay. Due to the commutative property, I can change my order any way I want. So if I switch these guys over here, I wind up with inches over inches, which equals 1 over 1. So I'm just going to do a 1 over 1 this way instead. Okay. I also notice, let me change colors, that I can re-simplify this 12 as a denominator with this 48 as a numerator. Because if in my head, if I choose to think of it as 48 over 12, I notice that I can actually divide both of these guys by, by 12, actually. And if I divide 12 by 12, I get 1. 48 divided by 12, I get 4. So there are those new values. Great setup, by the way, because now I'm ready to multiply my numerators and my denominators. My denominator is great. 1 times 1 times 1 times 1. That gives me a big fat 1. And up top, I have 1 times feet 
times 4 times 1. Well, the 1s are gone due to the identity property, and I'm left with 4 feet. 4 times feet, which is 4 feet. And if that's sitting over 1, well, then that equals 4 feet. Okay? Uh, yeah, lots of ways to solve these types of problems. And uh, that's the deal, folks. Okay? Thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye.